Ukrainian drones destroy expensive Russian warplanes again. Kremlin's Kharkiv operation fails. Ukraine has claimed a successful drone strike on the Morozovsk airfield in Russia's Rostov Oblast on the 15th of June, about 280 kilometers from the front lines. Ukrainian intelligence agency chief Lieutenant General Kirillo Budanov told the war zone the attack involved at least 70 drones targeting the strategic airbase, which houses Russian Su-34 fullback fighter bombers and Su-24 and Su-24M fighter jets. In a massive attack overnight on the 13th to the 14th of June, Ukrainian drones targeted numerous Russian facilities. Russia's defense ministry claimed it destroyed 87 drones in Belgorod, Voronezh, Kursk and Rostov oblasts of Russia and in occupied Crimea. In Voronezh oblast, fuel tanks were damaged according to the region's governor. Satellite images obtained by the war zone confirmed that the airfield was indeed struck with visible damage to a multi-aircraft shelter and an apron area. Two Su-34 jets can be seen inside the damaged shelter, likely suffering some degree of damage from the drone attack. Ukrainian security source said Ukraine's precision strikes targeted Su-34 jets and glide bomb munition facilities at the airfield. The targets were struck to degrade Russia's ability to conduct airstrikes on Kharkiv, the source said, speaking on condition of anonymity. This will support Ukraine's campaign to push the Russian ground forces back from the temporarily occupied territories. During the attack, locals reported explosions in the town of Morozovsk, followed by a fire and some residential areas lost electricity after the drone strike. Governor Vasily Golubev claimed Russian air defenses successfully repelled a massive drone attack in the region, destroying drones near several populated areas with no reported casualties on the ground. Russian sources acknowledged the attack but provided different accounts. The Krevlyovskaya Tabakurka telegram channel claimed six pilots were killed and 10 troops wounded, while the Devar Mayora channel stated that no jets were damaged, although it criticized vulnerabilities in Russia's air defenses against drones. Visual evidence of the attack also emerged on social media with videos showing drones flying overhead and reports of explosions near the airbase. A photograph circulated depicting a large ball of flame and black smoke allegedly from the drone strike. This is the second major Ukrainian drone attack on Morozovsk airfield in two months following a previous strike on the 5th of April when Ukraine initially claimed significant damage in that incident but subsequent satellite imagery showed no major destruction. Ukrainian troops must be withdrawn from the entire territory of the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics, Zaporozhye and Kherson regions, then Russia will be ready for negotiations. This was stated by Russian President Vladimir Putin at a meeting with the leadership of the Russian Foreign Ministry. Ukrainian troops must be completely withdrawn from the Donetsk, Lugansk People's Republics, Kherson and Zaporozhye regions, and I draw attention to this, from the entire territory of these regions within their administrative borders that existed at the time of their entry into Ukraine. As soon as Kiev declares that he is ready for such a decision and will begin a real withdrawal of troops from these regions, and will also officially notify of the abandonment of plans to join NATO, on our part, immediately, at the same minute, an order will follow to cease fire and begin negotiations, the head of state indicated. I repeat, we will do this immediately, Putin emphasized. The president noted that the Russian side's conditions for starting negotiations are simple and explained that Moscow has always strived for peace. Russia also guarantees the unhindered and safe withdrawal of Ukrainian units from Donbass and Novorossiya if such a decision is made in Kiev, the president said. Naturally, at the same time we guarantee the unhindered and safe withdrawal of Ukrainian units and formations. We, of course, would like to count on such a decision both on the withdrawal of troops, and on non-aligned status, and on the beginning of a dialogue with Russia, in Kiev they will accept it independently," the president emphasized. Putin missed his chance to crush Ukraine before U.S. elections. Putin may have missed 
an opportunity to score a decisive military victory at the front before the presidential election in the United States. Francis Dianli writes about this in an article for The Telegraph. He recalled President Joe Biden's speech on the anniversary of D-Day, in which he linked the war in Ukraine with the sacrifice his compatriots made 80 years ago, as well as permission to use American weapons on Russian territory. Ukraine recently struck the command center in Belgorod, Russian ships in the port of Taganrog, and, in its most symbolic triumph, one of the Kremlin's most modern and expensive aircraft, the Su-57 fighter. Dian Lee notes that these attacks alone do not change the strategic situation, but together with the attacks on Russian oil depots, they demonstrate that, logistically, Ukraine has reached a tipping point where it can no longer be defeated. In addition, recently approved aid from the United States is already arriving at the front and the Czech Shell initiative is moving quickly. The critical window of opportunity when Moscow outnumbered and outgunned Kiev has almost certainly passed, and as November approaches, it will cost Vladimir Putin dearly politically. His goal was to carry out a significant invasion of Ukraine before America went to the polls and putting Biden in an awkward position and obliging whoever wins the White House to force Kyiv into peace talks, he added. According to the journalist, it is worth re-evaluating the period that followed the Ukrainian counter-offensive which failed. It should now be seen as a highly effective defense and a potentially decisive military victory. Let us recall that Washington has long resisted Ukraine's requests to allow American weapons to be used on Russian territory. They announced the lifting of this ban after more than 10 NATO countries supported the right of Ukrainians to defend themselves in this way. After this, a number of successful attacks on the positions of the occupiers on Russian territory were reported. The mayor of Kharkov, Igor Terekov, said that this helped reduce the intensity of shelling in the city.